I'm the Scar Model Geek, and I'm way overdue to do another Batman figure. It's been about 10 months since I did my last one, and I really want to do a scene out of this movie, The Batman from 2022 with Robert Patterson. I want to do the scene where it explodes through the fireball during the car chase with the Penguin. I'll be starting off with the kit of the Batmobile from a company called Bandai in 135th scale. Now of course the Batmobile is going to look a bit weird if it doesn't have a driver so I created Robert Patterson as the Batman in a 3D piece of software called Blender. It's in 135th scale so it's popped straight into the car. Now let's get straight into the build. And because this is a snap kit I won't be using much uh, glue in this build and it goes together really nicely. The details really good in this kit. During the making of the movie I heard rumours that they were making the Batmobile based on a muscle car and when I heard that quite honestly I was a bit iffy about the whole idea but when I saw the behind the scenes images it was so visceral I loved the look of it it was real and it was powerful especially the first time Bats revs up the engine oh, loved it yeah I know the movie is very divisive but I love the movie I thought it brought Batman back to who he was which was the greatest detective on the planet I thought Robert Patterson did a great job as an emo Batman <laughs> anyway back to the build I'm just cutting out the original seat and that section needs to be totally flat so a bit of clipping then a bit of sanding down and the 3D print of Batman just pops straight in and it's just a matter of gluing him in so it aligns with the dash the great thing about this being a snap kit is that I can put things together, give it a bit of a check, see if it all's going well, and uh, yeah, pull it apart again. Now I was doing that because I'm going to wire this car up, and it's going to have some headlights, some lights coming out of the bonnet, and also a bit of a fireball down the side of the car. And putting all those lights in is going to be a bit of a challenge considering the scale of the car. It's going to be a bit of wiring underneath the bonnet. There was a fair bit of hacking to do to the frame of it, just to make sure the wiring had proper access from uh, the front to the back. Now a quick base coat of some flat black from Vallejo. And there are the side panels, the rather the inside roll cage I believe it is. And a bit of silver again from Vallejo for the engine. And then the same silver for the dials on the dash and some red for the computer screens as well. I did find some pretty cool interior shots of the Batmobile and I did notice there was a few details that were left out of the model kit specifically on the passenger side. Now I'm using some of this Panzer Grey from Ammo. This is a dry brushing paint. It's very thick and I'm using that to bring out all the detail in the interior. Then the next step was to start detailing the engine. Now I was lucky to find some amazing images of the engine and um, that gave me a lot of reference on how to paint it. Areas like the rocker covers, the bells, the exhaust mounts and also those black things on, what are they, turbos or something. And to add a bit more detail and bring out some of the depth I'm using some of this accent colour from Tamiya and just running, it's like a wash, it's like a very very thin wash and just running that through all the engine. That brings out a lot of detail. And with the engine all done, a quick test fit once again. And this just gives me an overall view of where I need to go for my next steps of assembly and painting, detailing, you know, where I need the wiring to go as well. And at this stage, it's actually looking really good. Very happy with the progress so far. Now onto the body panels. I just snip them out of the sprue and then give them a bit of a coat of flat black. Now I did do a couple coats of this just to make sure I got a nice even coat. And then Bat Patterson also gets a coat of flat black. Good news is the figure will be available as a 3D print or a 3D print file. Links to where you can get them will be in the description. Now you can go out and get yourself a driving Batman for your next project. And once Bat's got his uh, full coat of black paint, I then gave him a bit of a dry brush with that same grey I used earlier from Ammo. Now to bring out some of the other detail, I used some silver on his chest emblem, which also serves as a battering. And some silver paint on his darts that he has on his wrists. I think they're darts, 
or arrows, and then some burnt red from Vallejo for his jaw. There he is, all done. I like him, he's come up really good actually. I'm really happy with the way Bat Patterson turned out. Bit of five minute aerodyne to glue him into the tub. Now I use um, a slow curing glue simply just to give me a bit of time to be able to adjust him, make sure he sits there properly. And these are the brake lights. Again, they just pop in. You can see the right hand side that is empty, there's nothing there. In the reference images I found, look like it had a whole bunch of cylinders on that side. I'm thinking they may be what holds the fuel for the thruster at the back of the Batmobile. I'm using some of this gun metal to bring out some more detail in the rims and also the roll cage and some body areas. If you haven't already, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit notifications. Your support is always appreciated. For the movie The Batman, director Matt Reeves actually had four of these cars built. They were based on a 1968-70 Dodge Charger. Some of the information I found on the car was that they used 426 Hemi V8 engines, originally designed for NASCAR. If I'm wrong, <laughs> let me know in the comments. Here I'm using 3 volt uh, LEDs. Now I've got 4 of them, 2 for the headlights and 2 to go underneath the uh, bonnet. And I've wired them up in parallel. There's a little chart on how I did that. This turned out to be a really tight fit for these LEDs, so I need to do some precision hacking to get them in. After a couple of trial and errors, I had enough space to get all the wiring in. I then used a bit of super glue to hold the LEDs in place. I'm always over cautious when I play with LEDs. Every time I do a step, I do a check, make sure everything's still okay, because you know if something goes wrong, you don't want to be backtracking with these things. In the next step, I need to make a flame that's coming off the side panel. In the movie, the Batmobile bursts through a huge ball of flame, and you can see on the right-hand side of the car, there's a huge amount of fire that's stuck to the car. I'm assuming that's from the fuel of the tanker that it crashed through. And to simulate that, I'm using some of these 3 watt LED filaments. And they're available from AliExpress, and they're really, really cheap, but they are extremely fragile. And because they are so fragile, I'm using a bit of super glue, then some of this baking soda to give it a really solid base to stick to and also remove any flexibility that you would get in the LED filament. And it must have worked very well because I didn't end up breaking any filaments. Lucky me. And the good news is, I haven't had a single issue with wiring up this car. A bit tight, but we were able to work around it. Off camera, I create this portion of road from some XPS foam, and I won't get into it in this video, but if you want to see how I created this road, just hit the link at the top right there, and that'll take you to another build where I'll give you all the details on how to create it. Now, let's create the ball of flame. Starting off, I'm using some of this bird netting. It's some galvanized wire. Now, I've cut a small little square out, and I'm just shaping it into a kind of a ball to get me started. I would recommend when you're playing with this type of netting to use some gloves. I didn't have any at the time, so I kind of ended up pricking myself a couple times. I deserved it. Here I flipped over the XPS foam just so I wouldn't scratch up the surface for some tests. And to create the fire, I'm using some of these cotton balls. All I did here was just tear off a little piece from the ball and just stretch it out so it ended up with a sort of a flame looking thing. And a bit of teasing and you know maneuvering and I got it into place with some PVA glue and then when we hit the power it came up awesome very happy with that looks a bit bright there but it looks really good in real life then I soldered the panel on and then started adding all the rest of the car panels on this got a bit fiddly I couldn't quite get one of the panels down it took me a little while to pop it into place and a quick test shake just to make sure I don't have any loose wires under the bonnet. And to create the rest of the major huge mega fireball, some more of these cotton balls. And just hot sticking them into place. Now be very careful when you use hot stick on a wire mesh because it tends to drip through and it did onto my finger. And check out my huge burn, look at that. Ouch, that was painful. 
But anyways, wear gloves or something. At this stage, it's looking more like a cauliflower than it is a ball of flame. So we need to fix that up. And the way you do that is tear and stretch and kind of combine the, the puffs of cotton together. So I write the joints of the two balls, grab them, twist them and stretch them together. And that combines and it starts to look like a unified ball of flame. Then it does cauliflower. The base color for the ball is sun yellow from Vallejo. And I just airbrush that all over. Trying to avoid getting an even um, coverage. I want it a bit mottled in some of the raised areas, some of this red also from Vallejo. The red needs to be on the outer areas, the raised areas. You don't want to get into the crevices because you want to keep that yellow. That signifies it's the hotter areas of the ball of flame. One of the things I was trying to do was to avoid it looking all symmetrical and even. So I had some areas darker, some lighter, you know, something a bit more unpredictable. And to create the wire frame to hold the LED strip, I'm using a coat hanger and some hot glue to create a type of a T frame. And this frame will hold a 12 volt LED strip. These strips do have very clear markings for the positive and the negative plus and the minus, minus being the black wire. And I printed up this little socket holder uh, to hold a 2.1 millimeter power socket. These strips are perfect for a job like this because they're bright, they're flexible, and they're only 12 volts. Now you may have noticed that earlier I was talking about my LED bulbs, they were only three volts. So I need to convert the power down to support those. So I'm using this ceramic resistor. This is what they recommended to me at an electronics store, JCAR here in Australia. I just know enough about electronics to get me into trouble. The resistor gets soldered onto the positive side, which is the red wire. If you look carefully, you will notice I've added another strip of LED to the front of it, so I get more light coming towards the car. And look at that, look how bright that is. With everything tested and working nicely, I then glue the fireball into place with some hot stick glue and then hit some of the top areas at the top of the fireball with some black sooty sections. And I make sure I kept on the light just so I had a fair idea what it was looking like during this process. One thing I did realize when I was uh, putting all this together is when I test fit the Batmobile coming out of the flame, it didn't feel like it was coming out of the flame. So I need to add some more cotton balls to the side and slightly covering the car. And by adding these extra pieces, it really felt like the car had come through the flame and that there wasn't just an explosion behind the car. Of course, we've got to do our base coats again, the same type of techniques I used on the big ball of flame. I made sure I still had a bit of access to the back of the fireball so when I fed through these wires from the car I had space to wire them together. A bit of five minute epoxy glue on all four wheels to make sure it stays in place because I'm pretty sure it's not a good thing if it fell off. With everything glued into place there was one more thing I needed to do to the fireball and that was to tease it a bit more and pull it out even further two main reasons for that one to try and get away from that ball shape and make it a bit more you know a bit more flamier and secondly to expose more of the light that's coming out from the center to make it look even hotter than it was and right here i was just about to call it done when i realized i had forgotten to glue on the windscreen wipers so <laughs> it was back to the sprue chop them off paint them up and with all that finally done it's time for our hero images
Thanks for sticking around and I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I enjoyed doing the build. If you're a big Batman fan like I am, go and check out these other two builds that I've done. They were a lot of fun as well. I hope to see you on the next build.